Today I'm going to show you how to create a digital collage with some classic movie images and some images that we found off of the internet. Now it's important whenever you're creating a digital collage with images from the internet that you make sure to take the time when you're searching in Google to click tools, select usage rights, and make sure that you have chosen uh, OK to use with modification. So you want to make sure that all of those image, images are Creative Commons and able to be used to make this fun digital collage. Now in your digital collage you want to have some different textures. Those could be fabric textures but they could also be something um, like snakeskin, they could be uh, different types of wallpaper, they could be different types of even things like peanut butter or sand. So think outside of the box with these as you're searching. You also want to have some props. So in this image, these are kind of some weird props here, but the shark head on the wall, the little prairie dog, the rope, and then these cans up here. Um, now you could also have really any number of things. You're not limited at all. You can think outside of the box with this as well. Maybe these people are bowling. Maybe they have little pom-poms and they're cheerleaders. So whatever you're trying to create, you can put them in a completely different setting and use props to do that as well. So let's go ahead and get started with this. First of all, in Photoshop, we need to open up our classic movie image. Now you can fi find these classic stills in our studying resources on Canvas. I would like you to use the images that we have there for this assignment. If you finish the assignment and you really enjoyed the process and you'd like to create your own with a different movie still, you can do that and just search your own as well. But if we're using the ones that you've, you've gotten from Canvas, go ahead and download those and then you can uh, just open one into Photoshop, whichever one that you would like. Now, we can set this image aside for now and create a new document. And this new document that I actually have already started creating is going to be our palette. To create that document, you're going to go to File, New, or Command N, and you're gonna set up a US paper size, 8.5 by 11, 300 PPI, CMYK color document and then hit OK when you're ready. Now I'm just going to go ahead and hit cancel since I already have mine. And there we go. Now let's view both of these at the same time, both of these documents. We can go to Window, Arrange, Tile to Up Vertical. There we go. Now we need to place some of the images that we found online onto our palette over here. And in order to do that, we find the images, make a folder online, or make a folder on our desktop, and then we can just go to File, Place, and then just place the images onto our document. Now, because we'll be sampling from this document, though, we need to make sure that this is all one layer. So if you're placing a bunch of these things, what you'll notice is that every single placement will be its own layer. So just to consolidate all of these, you're going to uh, command click, or I'm sorry, control click or right click, and then select merge visible, and that should bring it all into one layer here. I'm going to I'm going to also unlock that layer just by double clicking, and hitting OK. Okay, so let's go back to our other image here. One thing that you should do before you really get started is go to image mode and make sure that we're set to a color mode. CMYK color should be what we're set to since we are using a CMYK color palette. So when we go to mode, if you are set to anything other than CMYK, make sure that you choose CMYK. You will get a little pop-up, but that's okay. Just hit okay. All right. So now we can actually start working. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here, zoom out a little bit here so that I can actually see. Now, most of what we will be doing as we create this collage is placing some samples over our image over here. So if I need to select something to place, I'm going to use my polygonal lasso tool, and I'm just gonna start clicking through here. And what I'm looking for is not just an item. So here I have her robe that she's wearing, but I'm also looking for the little uh, separations of things like arms from collars. So here I have the sleeve, and then I have this collar here, and I want those to be a little bit separate, a little bit different, so that I can tell there's two different things instead of just one big blob of fabric over here. So once I have that selected, I'm going to click and drag it over 
So my other document, if you don't see it, drag over, just let go, and then that should, or you know, just drag it over to where you want it and let go, and that should pop right up. And then we're going to lay it over the thing that we would like to select. This looks pretty good. I guess I could give her coffee bean arms, but I think I'll do the tie here. And then we'll hit a Command C. Then just click back into your document and hit a Command V. You can use um, your arrow keys if you're in your Move tool just to arrow it if you don't have it quite where you would like it when you initially place it. And there we go. Now, another thing that you'll want to do is hit Command L. And what we're going to do here is play around with uh, levels a little bit. And the levels are going to allow us to darken or lighten something. And I'm just going to darken the sleeve just a little bit. And you just do that by moving these little adjustments here. And if you have preview checked, you should be able to see what that's doing off to the side. And I'm going to hit OK. So now I'm going to go back to my polygonal lasso tool. And I'm going to select the collar here. Now, as you're selecting these things, it helps to zoom in. So that would be Command Plus, and then zoom out. Whoops. If you find that you have not selected appropriately, which it looks like I didn't, um, then you can just hit Delete, and that'll walk you back on those selections. When you're using the Pen tool, you hit that uh, Command Z or Command Option Z. But with the polygonal lasso, you're just going to hit delete, and that'll walk you back. So there's my selection. I'll pull it over here. Now, if you find that you've made a selection that's too long for the area that you'd like to select, you can hover the top part of that selection into the, the area, hit a Command C, go back, and paste it. And then click back into this document, and you'll still see your selection there. Pull that up just a little bit and hit a Command C. Click back in here, hit a Command V again, and then you can just oh, hit V to get to your Move tool, and then you can move the first selection or the second selection over the first one. Hit E for your eraser tool, close bracket to size that up, and then you can just erase the part that you don't want. Then since you have those on two different layers, just hold down your shift key, select both of those layers, control click, merge layers. There you go. Hit V again to move this. Move it to where you want. Another little tip, if you're placing, you can do a command shift V and it'll place it in, or it will paste it in place. And that is a little bit easier as well. I'm going to do a Command L here and just play with the levels. This already is a little bit lighter, so I don't think we need to do much to it. But if you wanted to, you could kind of lighten that up a little bit just to create a differentiation between these two pieces. And there we're starting to look like she has this kind of yellow robe on. Now, another thing that you can do as you are creating this world that your person will be in is you can mask your image as well. So maybe I'd like to mask my person into a different background. If I do that, I need to unlock my image layer. So I'm just going to do that by double clicking and hitting OK. And then I need to place in an image that's going to act like my background. So I'm going to go to File, Place. And I think I'm going to place in the artichoke wallpaper. I really like that. So place that in. Now this is a little, actually a lot small, but just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to just enlarge it. Whenever you are enlarging something, make sure to hold that shift key down and pull from the corner. Uh, once you're done, you're going to pull that image underneath your original image here. And I'm going to turn off these uh, layers that I put on the top of my image layer just so I can see a little bit better. If you have many layers on top, you can click onto your image layer and do a command shift um, and then close brackets will take you all the way to the top and then command shift open brackets will take you down to the bottom. So, there we go. So I'm going to, again, just try to see all of her there. Go to my quick selection tool and then just select my figure. Select whatever I would like masked into the background. 
So I'm going to go ahead and select her with the chair because I feel like that makes more visual sense. Now remember as you're going through if you need to deselect something that's just the option key and that will give you that kind of perfect control. And that's part of that chair so I guess I'll go ahead and keep that. With some of these older images it's really difficult because um, so much of it is not as crisp as a modern image might be. You see a lot of blurry images. Um, so just something to keep in mind there. Now, once I've selected this, I'm going to go ahead and click the mask icon, and that's just a little rectangle with a circle down here at the bottom. And you can see that I've masked my image into the background. Now, because there's no horizon line here, I may eventually want to go back to my background and use something like the shape tool, the rectangle tool, and just do that in a color. I mean, right now it's black, so that's okay. That little pop-up was just saying that I needed to rasterize that layer. If you get that, uh, just hit OK. So here I've just created a floor, and then maybe later I can go in and place some uh, wood planks in that spot to show that that's a wooden floor. Um, so there we go. That's our masked image. Now I can take my layer that my image is on and pull that back down, and you can see that clothing starting to come together. So you want to do this with your entire image. If you notice that your mask is a little off in some spots, like here that's not looking so great, I can click onto my mask and then hit the brush tool, B, and then uh, paint black to hide anything that I would like to hide. And again, for these types of things, it really helps just to zoom in to get your precision. Let me go ahead and just pick that up. And since you're placing a lot of selections over the original image, you can actually erase more than you would typically erase by masking, by painting that mask out. And that usually works just fine because a lot of that you're going to be putting something else over the top. Now, with the hair, you can do the same thing. So don't think that you have to stop with the hair. Um, you can use images like this. This is another Creative Commons image that I'm using to uh, eventually mask this hair in. Now, remember, you also want to have some props. So I have found some props that I think might work, but I will see here if they actually will. What I want to do is go to the very top layer when I'm ready to place my props in. And I am going to go to File, Place. And again, I've already found these images online. So I have a coffee cup here, and I have this little dog. I think I'm going to place the little dog in there. And when you're placing any of these props in, obviously you're going to need to mask those as well. So um, what I will do is zoom in, go over here to the dog, go to my quick selection tool. Whoa, that selected perfectly. And then click my little mask. Okay. Now, if you're selecting something like this dog, and you have some fur that you would like to refine, you can go up here to Refine Edge. And if you paint along this edge, you'll notice that anywhere where this green is showing, you can kind of paint in there, and that will delete some of that. Hit OK, and then you can mask that. And the dog gets masked in really well there. Um, hit V to get to your Move tool. Move the dog around. You can size it down, maybe place it in back there and there we're starting to get a little image now I could you know you can you decide where you want to put you decide where you want to put this little dog maybe you size the dog up and the dog sitting up here in the couch so you you get to kind of decide how you want to arrange your final image so play around with this, have fun. Remember that the majority of your image needs to be recreated with these textures. You also need to have about 10% of your image done with props, and then 10% of your image should be the original image. So again, this is all roughly 10%. You know, you want to eyeball it and say, did I make most of my image in uh, my textures here? And then did I place in some other things as well that would kind of make it into a fun, different environment. So there you go. 
experiment, have some fun with this, and good luck.